Hi everyone, this is Teal from Puckablocks.com. Do you use this Zebra G nib for drawing comics? Do you use it on a nib holder like this? Have you ever found it inconvenient because you have to go into the ink bottle to just refill the nib all the time when you're drawing? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can modify a fountain pen to use this exact G nib. And this is the fountain pen that I have here. It uses the same G nib but it uses the fountain pen refilling system which is basically a cartridge system so you can draw one whole page of comics without refilling the net. Before I tell you how to modify this fountain pen, let me just demonstrate the differences between drawing using the nib on a nib holder and drawing it with the fountain pen. The ink I'm using is platinum carbon ink. It's a waterproof fountain ink fountain pen ink that uh, is specially made for fountain pen use. So let me just dip the dip pen into the ink bottle and see how much I can draw with just one dip. This is the standard zebra nib that I'm using. And that is about how much I can basically draw with one dip of the nib. So let me now try it with the fountain pen. I left this fountain pen overnight, so let's see if there's any ink or is, if the ink is dried up. Oh, okay, it's still working today. Performance is exactly like the nib as if you're using it on the nib holder. There's not too much difference except maybe this fountain pen is a bit heavier. So if you draw a bit fast, then you are going to get this real rolling effect. I'll try to draw slower so that the ink catches up when the nib is flexing. It does use a lot of ink when the nib is flexing, so you have to go a bit slower. So you can achieve very thin lines as well, just like you would on the nib holder. You can achieve very thick lines as well if you flex it, but go slower. So I've drawn one more square like this. Uh, you can see if I draw very fast, it will railroad. Sometimes when it does run out of ink, you do need to let's say give it a little bit of a boost because I left it overnight it could have dried up just push it a bit and the ink will start flowing again but the main thing to note is you do not need to refill it uh, you do not need to refill it like your normal nib holder this is a drawing I drew a few days ago with the Namiki Falcon nib pen which is also a flex pen so now i'm going to use the zebra nib on this fountain pen and let you see the difference So that's the difference between drawing it with a zebra nib versus a Namiki Falcon. I was able to get slightly more flexible lines.
let me show you now the equipment that you need you need a fountain pen this one is made in China this is called Jinhao X750 that's spelled as J I N H A O X 750 you can buy this on eBay I bought this for less than US $5 including shipping the other thing you need of course is your Zebra G nips this you can get this in a set of 10 for the chrome version it's just under $10 they also have the titanium plated version which is yellow in color so this is the chrome version and this is actually the original nib of the fountain pen and of course you need ink uh, the performance of the pen will depend on the ink itself so I tried Noodler's ink and sometimes when I flex it the ink will split up it's more easy it's easier to split up using Noodler's ink but your experience may differ so I'm using platinum carbon ink here this is the extreme close-up of the nib you can see the hole, the cards and the feet section below now to align the feet correctly you can use this cut on the nib to help you align that so you see these vertical parallel cuts there there's this first parallel cut make sure that it aligns with the first cut on the nib so that when you look at a nib like this you will be able to see through to the bottom such as the top part here you can see through from the nib to the feet and to the back and when you look at the bottom, the bottom is something like this. It's very close to the edge of the nib with just a very slight gap, just a very tiny gap. But again, uh, look out for this first slot here. Make sure that you can see through to the nib, to what's behind. To replace the nib, you just pull out. You can twist a tiny little bit but don't twist too much because the feet is not designed for you to twist in a clockwise or anti-clockwise manner. And because the nib is not, how should I say, the nib is not sized uh, correctly for the feet, it's not designed specifically for the feet so it can be a bit tight. That is why I'm using tissue paper now and a set of pliers to pull it out. So when you are using the pliers to pull out the nib, make sure you don't use the pliers like this because it will bend the cuts below. You can see some of them are bent here. Try and use it like this and go at it like this instead so that the pliers do not damage the feet below. Let me try it again. Okay, it's finally out. Let me show you the feet. Oops, I think I damaged the feet a bit. I think, but it should be, it should still be usable. Oops, ink on the board. So you can see, I somehow damaged the feet section a bit, but it should be still, it should still be usable. So remember, go at the nib like this instead of like this. This is going to t bend the nibs, uh, the feet. I mean, before you can use it, of course, you need to refill it. The converter comes with the pen, so I'm just going to fill it. Oh, also, before you fix up the nib just now, you may want to remove the converter, but I don't think it's necessary. This is a piston converter, so I'm just going to put it down. I fill it with uh, some ink. When you leave the nib overnight, the ink may dry up the next day. 
but you can, like I mentioned just now, just twist a converter to force the ink out a bit so that you can use the pen again. And if the ink somehow clogs the pen, you can again pull out the nib to just um, clean the pen. So let's see if it actually works. It works very well. You can even use it for cross hatching, but the uh, nib is actually very thin and it might cut your cut into the paper, so be careful when you are doing cross hatching like this. That's all for the modification. And there's actually not much modification because you are just basically pulling out the feed section and replacing it with the zebra on it. It's a very affordable setup. The pen itself costs as much as the nib holder. And it also comes with the, cut, uh, the ink converter. A box of nibs like this is under US $10. And if you are using this nib for drawing comics, make sure to get some pigment ink. The one that I use is uh, Platinum Carbon Ink. I will post all the information that you need in the video description below. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask me as well. That's all for today's video. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be uh, featuring more fountain pens for drawing, sketchbooks, sketching tips and techniques. Thanks and have a nice day.